a pre-built computer. You're paying 150 more for the convenience. Don't, Don't be a noob. Mac, a pre-built but more expensive computer with premium materials like aluminum. Get it for the design and reliability. Other than that, get a custom PC. There will be a lot of abbreviations so you will need to pay attention. Picking the parts. Start by picking the processor, the brain of your PC. It does all the complicated calculations. I'm just gonna talk about Intel as I'm not very familiar with AMD. Waiting for Ryzen. So there are five main types, Pentium i3, i5, i7, and Xeon processors. I'm just gonna focus on current processors. There are four for average consumers. Here are some examples. Most recent processors have four numbers. Older ones have three numbers. First number is the architecture or how modern the processor is. Pentium doesn't apply. Last three numbers is how good the processor is. The higher the better. Here are the prices. Here's a visual representation of how powerful each type is. The more cores, the better. Even though a single i3 core is more powerful than an i5's, the i5 has more cores so it will outperform the i3 almost always. However, games only rely on 1-2 to two cores. That's why you can game on a Pentium or an i3. Here are the main uses of each processor. The K stands for an unlocked processor for overclocking, overclocking, which means you can manually apply more voltage across the processor and make it run faster than it was designed for. Don't buy ones with other letters, it could be for a laptop. Now that's out of the way, we can pick your motherboard. Their brands don't matter. There are three main sizes, ATX, Micro-ATX, and ITX. Normal computers use ATX and Micro-ATX. For compact PC builds, choose ITX. Motherboards have prefixes, X, Z, H, and B. X is for enthusiasts, and it can only fit these three processors. Z is for overclocking, for an i3, i5, or i7 processor with a K in its name. H is basically Z, but without the overclocking, for gaming purposes. B is basic for your mom, office, or schoolwork. Some motherboards come with onboard Wi-Fi. If it doesn't, buy a Wi-Fi card or use an Ethernet cable. Based on the size of your motherboard you picked, get a case which can fit it. Cases went from plastic beige to black aluminum to acrylic windows and now tempered glass is trendy as hell. Cooler Master for budget cases, Corsair, Fantex and NZXT for mid-range, Lee and & Lee and case mods for high-end chassis. Check these key measurements of the case. Max power supply size and length, max CPU cooler height, max graphics card length, radiator support, number of hard disk drive base and solid state drive base. RAM is like your short-term memory. It's faster than an SSD and your computer stores information it currently needs and automatically deletes it when you close the program. Do not buy sodium or ECC memory. 8 gigs is good for gaming and general use. 16 for content creation, 32 or more for enthusiasts. Check your motherboard if it supports older DDR3 or current DDR4 RAM. 2.6 is better than 1 at the same capacity. The number of megahertz, the brand, and the version of the RAM does not make much difference. Graphics card. GPU for short makes the games look pretty and played at a decent frame rate above 60 FPS. I'm just gonna focus on Nvidia. The last two numbers show how good the card is. Do not buy cards with letters other than TI as it could be a laptop card and the performance will be nowhere near desktop GPUs. Here are the most recent cards. Here are the prices. Here is the expected performance. Try to buy the latest generation GPUs as they give the better performance at lower prices and consume less power than older generations. Also double check the length of the card you're buying to make sure it fits your case. The GTX 980 at $550 have the same performance as the GTX 1060, which is half the price. The 980 Ti is between the 1060 and 1070 at $650. Try not to buy anything below the GTX 1050 as lower end GPUs are not worth your money. Click here to find out why. So you've brought a processor without K. It will come with the stock Intel cooler. It has a small heatsink and fan, so fans will spin pretty loud if you're doing something intense like playing games or rendering. Since the K processor consumes more power, more heat is produced and the processor will thermal throttle, reducing its speed to prevent its temperature from exceeding 100 degrees Celsius. So an aftermarket cooler can be bought. Great budget performance like the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo has a large heatsink and fan for lower CPU temps and noise. Dual towers are also used for extreme cooling. Make sure you check the height of the heatsink and if it fits your case. Noctua has the best heatsinks even though they might be a little more expensive. All-in-one liquid cooling loops can be used for the best cooling performance. Make sure your case can fit its radiator. High-end air coolers have the same performance as an AIO, the power supply unit. 
Do not go cheap here. It is the digestive system of your PC. You don't eat enough, you die. So will your computer if you do not give it enough wattage. Go for well-known brands like Corsair, Seasonic, and Cooler Master. You can find the PSU you need with the PC wattage calculator. Links in the description. Input your components and add 150 watts to that value just to be sure. Bronze, silver, gold, and platinum certificates are basically how efficient the power supply is. At full load, bronze is 80% efficient and platinum up to 94% efficient. If you're worried about cable management, get a modular power supply. These cost a bit more, if not, just get a normal one. Also check if this fits in your case. Get a 120 or 240 gig solid state drive for the operating system and applications for faster boot times. A hard disk is added for higher capacity storage but lower speed. Get a 1 or 2 terabyte hard drive. The 5400 RPM hard disk runs slower but quieter, less vibrations than the 7200 RPM version. Speed or quiet, you choose. Okay, we pick the parts. Short intermission before assembly while I go get the part. <laughs> Get your case, remove the side panels and insert the I.O. shield. Take out your motherboard and place it on the box it came in. Press this metal rod to the side and lift the cover. Take out the processor. The gold colored triangle on one corner of the processor corresponds with the triangle in the socket. Place it in. Flip the cover back. Make sure the cover is under the screw. Apply pressure downwards and lock it in place. Insert the RAM. Open the clips. Line up the notch with the protrusion in the slot. Push down on it firmly until the clips snap back to reality. Automatically. Add thermal paste on the processor. It should be the size of a rice grain cause I'm Asian and follow the instructions that come with the cooler. Different brands have different procedures. If you're using the stock cooler, press on the four tabs until you hear a click and twist the tabs 90 degrees to lock it in place. Plug in a CPU fan into the motherboard connector which says CPU fan. See your motherboard screw holes and insert 6 corresponding standoffs into the case. Insert your motherboard and push it in the direction of the I.O. shield. Then screw it in. Do not use excessive force. Take these wires for front panel connectors. Big blue one for USB 3.0. All wires are labeled. Check the motherboard manual for the locations of the connectors, audio and microphone, USB 2.0 and front panel connectors. If your case has fans, plug those into the system fan connectors on the motherboard. Remove these rectangular panels at the back and slide your graphics card with the grooves at the back as guides. Push down it firmly like the RAM and screw in the screws to secure the graphics card in place. Slide in the power supply and screw in the four screws. Pull the 24-pin connector from the back to the front of the case. Plug it into the motherboard. There is one more 4, 6 or 8 pin at the top of the board. Higher end graphics cards have 14 pins or more. Mid range with 12 or less. Lower end GPUs like the 1050 don't have it. Plug in your SSD and hard disk drive with the long SATA power connector from your power supply. Plug in the short SATA cable for data into the remaining slot and insert the other end into the motherboard. Turn on the power, load Windows 10 onto the SSD and done. You have a working computer. Computer. Aesthetics! Add some LED lights, swap out the case fans with RGB fans, and make a custom water cooling loop. But the easiest way to make your build look good is just to allocate more budget into a better looking case, preferably a tempered glass one. For a detailed look into any components, check out the videos I've listed in the description. This video was sponsored by myself. Bye!